So, um, uh, again, we're going to, we just, just did patching. We're going to go down to this preferences. We're going to kick on general. And uh, here we've got five tabs. Uh, this one that says configuration, this is going to show us whether this console is a master or a slave. Um, this one is the master. If we were going to hook up a second uh, control surface to the same uh, DL251 box, that one would have to be the slave box. So that only one box is in control of the analog amp. But again, each uh, console has its own digital amp, so each guy has their own control. Uh, then sync source, uh, we can have a drop down menu of where we want it to sync clock from. Internal, uh, we can have it sync from uh, uh, the different front of house ports. Uh, we can have it sync over that AES3, um, so on and so forth. Uh, DSP timeout, foot switch modes, what uh, uh, there's a couple of holes in the back you can plug some foot switches into so you can use those foot switches to. Uh, do a couple different kinds of controls. Uh, this one will control the fan speed of the uh, cooling fans in the console. Uh, up here, uh, if you're using a DL431 splitter, you can tell the console that you want it to use mic inputs A or B. Obviously, we've got a date and time set. Uh, and then here, this input source is, uh, if it's set on normal, it's going to take its inputs from the DL251. If you set it to tape returns, uh, it's going to pull the inputs from those tape returns, which I just showed you in the patching a few minutes ago. And if you were to click on this right here, once you've said tape returns, it says enable all tape returns, then we would be able to send uh, all the inputs uh, via the tape returns as opposed to from the preamps in the Midas blue box. This would uh, restore exactly what they say, default preferences, default globals, which uh, I would not recommend unless you really want to. Uh, here would be uh, controls uh, for the, the remote for the server if you were going to put a router on the back of this to either interface with a computer or an iPad. Now, we're going to go up to show, and here is going to tell us if, uh, uh, again, I was saying earlier about uh, how you can choose some different amounts of effects versus graphic EQs, uh, so you can set that up based on how you feel. If you want to do some uh, different forms of surrounding, and uh, the automate patching needs to be engaged for something we're going to see in the next screen. So uh, when we go over to user, uh, this next one, uh, user interface, display rotary values, that was uh, what I had showed you earlier when I laid my finger on top of an encoder that it would show the value of the encoder. Uh, uh, delay control down in that uh, assignable control section uh, right here over the top of uh, the top of that. Um, select follow solo, automate paging, uh, touch navigation of detail area, so on and so forth. We see all these things. Uh, here, this navigation mode, uh, again, in the previous page where we had to uh, engage uh, uh, this, this automate patching. Uh, when we're in user here, uh, if you were to turn this on a normal front of house, it would actually give you a default patch of what they would use for front of house or a default patch for monitors. Advanced starts the console in an unpatched state that you would have to uh, patch all of those, uh, patch all of those uh, yourself. This VCA unfolding, if you're doing some stereo pair keyboards, uh, when you unfold uh, the VCAs and they deploy, it would use only one channel to indicate the stereo pair. Um, uh, override safe parameters so when you store a scene this is going to uh, uh, be destructive to anything that is safe uh, so you need to make sure whether or not you truly want that engaged uh, up here uh, some uh, controls for virtual sound check if you're using those tape returns through the KT 96 by 96 uh, recorder or some other sort of a uh, recording device uh, some different functions for metering, uh, we can see what those all are. Uh, then over again here we've got uh, some uh, controls of the LEDs uh, uh, on the screen. Then the next tab we've got here is linking, so we're going to go ahead and just click on that. And uh, these are just going to tell us what we would want it to link on input channels, AUGs returns, AUG sends, matrices and on the masters and uh, if you were to 
select one of these, you would select it and tell it that you want to change existing and now uh, that would have uh, engaged that new function that you gave it. Um, the last thing uh, that we have in this is delay compensation, um, which is a pretty cool thing that Midas has given us. Um, these are some just, uh, I don't want to call them generic, but generic presets that if it's just for a front of house mix or a low latency front of house mix, you can select those and it'll uh, check the applicable boxes. Um, and what this delay compensation really does is if we're going to look down here at, at the faders and let's... Uh, Let's say these faders are a representation of time, okay? Let's say these are our kick drum channels, and uh, because Midas has given us a really easy ability to use, let's say, an external gate or an external compressor that we really like, um, because the audio has got to leave the console, go through an external device, and come back, uh, there's going to be a little time loss lost uh, going through all that extra processing. Now, let's say on this next pair of channels, uh, this is all internally processed, so they don't take uh, quite as long to process. And, you know, this uh, area of time is really, really small, but uh, when all of your inputs are happening at a different time, it is kind of jumbling everything to your mix bus. Um, so when we engage the delay compensation, the console senses that, hey, these channels are taking a little longer than these ones, so it's actually going to slow down these just a little bit so that everything is in the same time signature so that everything is delayed back to the slowest process channel on the console so that uh, when it hits your master bus or your mix bus or whatever, um, you get as much clarity uh, as you possibly can because all those things are happening at the right time. So I really dig that delay compensation, and that's something Midas uh, has prided themselves uh, very greatly on.